Hey there, I'm Kelly. And I'm Hollis. Welcome to part two of our series, King of Kings. In these four sessions, we're diving deep into the history of God's work through the ancient kings of Israel. The Old Testament of the Bible is filled with stories of good kings, bad kings, and all of the people who had to deal with them. So it's helpful to know a little bit about who those kings were, what they did, and what they did wrong. As we study these histories, we'll see that we are all a mix of wise and poor decisions, and we'll consider where to look for the direction and wisdom we desperately need. Plus, understanding the context of how those in the Old Testament lived gives us gives uh, guides us to a clearer understanding of the work of Jesus described in the New Testament. It's important to remember that kings weren't God's original design for the people of Israel. God was supposed to be the only ruler of Israel, but while the Israelites wanting to be more like the other nations insisted God give them a king. Eventually, God relented to their pleas. In their quest for spiritual direction, what followed was centuries of confusing power for justice and confusing influence for wisdom. Something we may be able to relate to even today. Yeah. Last time we talked about King David. David was described as a man after God's own heart, but he also made some big mistakes. And today we're going to spend our time in the story of a would-be king of Israel. His name is Absalom. What do we know about Absalom? Well, we know Absalom was the third son of King David. His mother, Maacah, was one of David's many wives. We also know that, according to scripture, it seems like Absalom might have been able to win over one of those sexiest men alive contests. <laughs> 2 Samuel 14, 25 says, Absalom was flawless from head to toe. There was nothing wrong with him. He was charming, charismatic, and powerful. Almost like me, <laughs> minus the power. <laughs> he, he also had long flowing hair. Like Just me. like you as <laughs> <Yeah>. well. <laughs> <laughs> that he would only cut once a year when it became too heavy, hmm. clocking in at roughly six pounds. I can't even imagine that. <laughs> And yeah, that seems like kind of a weird detail to include. If you don't know that, in that culture, long hair was a sign of pride and strength. The point is, Absalom was everything you'd imagine a royal prince to be. Like a Disney prince. Prince Ali. No. Exactly. <laughs> Absalom is a Hebrew name meaning father of peace. Yet, as we'll see, he was far from being a peaceful man. Scripture tells us the story of how Absalom killed his half-brother and rebelled against his father's rule in order to take revenge and to seize power. In the end, Absalom tried to take David's throne by force, only to end up hanging from an oak tree by his hair and impaled by the spears of his father's army. But how did he end up here? Why did he rebel? Mm. Well, while Absalom's journey may have ended in violence, it began with a real desire to see greater justice and peace. To understand how Absalom's story went so off track, we have to look at his family. Like all of us, Absalom's family history shaped him. And like many of us, Absalom's family history involved some secrets and some trauma. See, Absalom, he had a younger sister named Tamar his most trusted sibling. Absalom and Tamar grew up alongside many of David's other children, including their half-brother, Amnon. And here's where the story gets really difficult. Amnon raped Tamar, his half-sister. When Absalom found out, he took his sister to his own home to protect and care for her. Absalom sheltered Tamar for the next several years, hoping his father, King David, would punish Amnon for what he did to his sister. David's daughter. When King David did absolutely nothing about it, Absalom's rage reached a fever pitch and he began to plot revenge against his half-brother and father. 2 Samuel chapter 13 says, When King David heard of all these things, he became angry, but he would not punish his son Amnon because he loved him, for he was his firstborn. Mm -hmm. Absalom hated Amnon because he had raped his sister Tamar. 
So Absalom made a plan to lure and assassinate Amnon. When the right time came, Absalom threw a major party, invited all of his brothers to attend, including Amnon. As Amnon focused on the celebration and wine, Absalom's men attacked. The murder went exactly as planned. Knowing his father David would be furious about this and he would probably be executed himself, Absalom did not stick around after the melee. He went into hiding for three years. 2 Samuel chapter 13, 37 tells us, David missed Absalom greatly, so much that he mourned for him day after day. Imagine what Absalom must have thought during those three years in hiding. Why did my dad get so mad over losing his son Amnon, but not over what happened to his daughter Tamar? Why did he mourn day after day for me as rebellious son, but not mourn every day for her? I can't help but think all these thoughts went through Absalom's mind when he was away from Jerusalem. The justice Absalom wanted for Tamar never materialized. Mm. King David never spoke out against Tamar's tragedy or punished Amnon. So Absalom took matters into his own hands. Absalom, the father of peace, chose violence and exile. But from here, his story goes from bad to worse. With the plot against his half-brother complete, Absalom turned his attention to his father, David. Absalom was eventually brought back to Jerusalem, but for two years was denied any contact with King David. We know during this time, Absalom continued to seek amends for his sister's betrayal. He even named one of his daughters Tamar, indicating how this still weighed greatly on him. Eventually, Absalom was restored to favor in David's court. But he took this opportunity not to seek justice for Tamar or peace with King David, but to take revenge by attempting to steal David's power. Absalom charmed David's constituents with his looks and his charisma, and then claimed himself king. This bold declaration led to an all-out battle between David's powerful army and Absalom's local backers. Absalom led a final insurrection against his father that resulted in the death of more than 20,000 Israelites. When it was clear that Absalom was losing the battle, he fled on a mule, the symbol of royal peace in Israel. As he rode away, his flowing hair stuck in the branches of an oak tree, leaving him hanging alone. Even though King David gave strict orders that Absalom be left alive, his man disobeyed that order and killed Absalom while he was still trapped. There were so many twists and turns in Absalom's tortured life. The inclusion of Absalom's wise and poor decisions in scripture point to many lessons, but there's one I want to draw our attention to today. When we use the tools of revenge, deceit, violence, and power at any cost, we eventually become shaped in that image. Absalom, the father of peace, rode on a mule, the symbol of peace, and died hanging from a tree while being pierced by the spears of soldiers. If you know the story of Jesus, this might sound familiar. We cannot miss the implications of Absalom's life compared to the life of Jesus. Every king of Israel from Saul to Solomon is associated with a donkey, the royal symbol of peace. But in stark contrast to all of Israel's earthly kings, Jesus, Jesus is the only king who is rightfully hailed as the prince of peace. When he rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, he genuinely ushered in God's kingdom with humility and love not arrogance and violence, or by manipulating others to secure his power. Like Absalom, Jesus died while hanging from a tree. But unlike Absalom, Jesus died while laying down his life, not grasping for power. He died fighting for peace, not fighting for revenge. I wonder where you see yourself in Absalom's story. Have you ever seen someone's desire for revenge consume them like it did Absalom. Are you that someone? Have you ever found yourself fighting for revenge when you should have been fighting for peace? Instead of achieving peace in a conflict, have you found yourself employing the same destructive behaviors that were modeled by you for others through Absalom? 
Jesus once told his disciples, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. According to King Jesus, peacemaking isn't just for leaders of nations. It's for ordinary people like you and like me. You may not be the ruler of a nation, but you're still a leader. You have some measure of influence and authority in your world and relationships. So how are you wielding it? When there's a conflict or a wrong, you want to see made right. In what ways have you been following the examples of Absalom? And what would it look like for you to follow the example of Jesus in that situation instead? Because in God's kingdom, leaders seek peace, not revenge.